Now, we need to multiply decimals by 10, 100 or 1000. And to do that, we always start in the same way. We write out our decimal, so here we have 40.01, and then we copy down the decimal point so that it's directly below the decimal point in our number. Now when we multiply, digits move to the left, and we're multiplying by 10, which has one zero, so digits move one square to the left. So we can copy this four down, one square to the left, and do the same with all of our other digits. That gives us 400.1 as our answer. Now we have 6.1, so we write the number out and copy down the decimal point, and to multiply by 10, the digits move one square to the left. And that makes sense, because when we have 10 of something, we can exchange it for one of the place value to the left. So to multiply by 10, we move the digits one square to the left. So if we do that, we get 61 and then a decimal point. Now if we have a decimal point on the end of our number, we have a whole number. So 6.1 times 10 is 61. And that makes sense because 6 times 10 is 60 and 1 tenth times 10 is 1. Because if we have 1 tenth and we multiply it by 10 so that we have 10 tenths, 10 tenths is the same as one whole. Now we have 36.21, so we write the number out and copy down the decimal point, but this time we're multiplying by 100. Now multiplying by 100 is the same as multiplying by 10 and then by 10 again. So to multiply by 100, the digits move two squares to the left. So we can copy down this three, two squares to the left, and do the same with all of our other digits. That gives us 3621, and the decimal point is on the end, which means we have a whole number. So our answer is 3621. Now we have 0 0.6, so we write the number out and copy down the decimal point, and when multiplying by 100, which means digits will move two squares to the left. The way to remember this is that 100 has two zeros, so digits move two squares, and when we multiply, the number gets bigger, so the digits are moving to the left, because to the left, we have our larger place values. So we can copy this zero down, one, two squares to the left, and do the same with this six. But now we have an empty square before the decimal point, and we know that the digit before the decimal point is the ones digit. So we need to write a zero in this empty square to show that the six has now moved into the tens column. So that's zero six zero with a decimal point now on the end. When the decimal point is on the end, we have a whole number, and we don't need this zero in our hundreds. We can just write our answer as 60. Now we have 5.8, so we write the number out and copy down the decimal point, and this time we're multiplying by a thousand. Now multiplying by a thousand is like multiplying by 10, and then by 10 again, and then by 10 for a third time. And that's why, to multiply by a thousand, we need to move our digits three squares to the left. So if we copy down this five, one, two, three squares to the left, and do the same with this eight, we now have two squares before our decimal point. So we need to write zeros in these empty squares to show that the five has now moved to the thousands column and the eight to the hundreds. So our answer is 5,800, because now the decimal point is at the end, we have a whole number. And that answer makes sense, because we know that 5 times 1,000 is 5,000, and 6 times 1,000 is 6,000. So because 5.8 is between 5 and 6, our answer is between 5,000 and 6,000. Finally, we have 7.05 times 1000, so we write the number out, copy down the decimal point, 
and to multiply by a thousand, the digits need to move three squares to the left. We can copy the digits one, two, three squares to the left, and now we have an empty square before the decimal point. So we need to write a zero in this empty square. So our answer is 7050. And again, that makes sense. We know that seven times a thousand is 7000. And 7.05 is just a little bit more than 7, so our answer is a little bit more than 7,000. So use estimation to check that your answer makes sense.